I'm down here in Esperance on the southern coast of Western Australia and I'm heading to Lucky Bay to meet up with Doc Reynolds who's a senior Aboriginal custodian of the area. And I'm meeting up with him at probably one of the best located coffee vans I've ever seen. Yeah, he must be Doc. Yeah, Rick. Hello. Yeah, there you go, mate. Welcome to Lucky Bay, mate. Thank you very much. So this is your van? Yeah, this is our yeah. van here, mate. The family run is yeah. between myself, my wife and, and my two daughters and oh, we nice. set it up here to accommodate people coming out into a remote, beautiful location. Yeah, yeah where they can enjoy a nice coffee. When I um, also share some of the bush food that I actually collect and hunt and gather oh, around here, which Excellent. I'll share with you a little later. Excellent. But being a senior cultural custodian to this area, my people have basically lived along the coastal strip. Right, okay. And we hunted and gathered. If you took me inland, I might as well stand next to you because I wouldn't know much about it. What I've got to manage some nice fish that I've caught this morning. We're going to go foraging so that we can have a cook up and a feast up later on today. Coming into a nymph plantation or yeah. a bush grape. You eat it just straight off the bush. Hmm. That's quite a unique flavour actually, isn't it? It has that really plummy sediments as well. And you can actually use them in salads, but you can also have it as a as a sweet, like if you have an ice cream. This plant here, the native coastal rosemary, is basically used on all of our native cultural foods that we have along here in saltwater country. Whether it's fish or kangaroo, it would use just to enhance the flavour. I, I don't think that smells much like rosemary back home actually. It's a lot more citrusy. The reason why it's citrusy and has that very thing, it's very moist. Right. And then when you get up into the other the other plants, and when you go inland, you get the other very same species, but it's an inland, but the flavour is much stronger. We're going to now collect some paper bark yeah. that we need to start cooking the fish up. And what we're going to do here is look along for a nice strip and we've got to do it so that we don't damage the trees. So the main thing about this here is that when you cook, even though it's paper bark, it does not burn. So when we're cooking it, you can put it on a hot coal, hot flame, it'll scorch it, but it won't actually harm what you've got inside. You stick your knife in. Wow. wow. Sap, can you drink that? Have a drink coming out, but this one will be a little bit salty because the lake's been very dry. Right. Right. And so what to do is get all that down over there. A bit there. So yeah. now what you've got here now, Rich, you've got a nice bit of bark. You can see it's moist. So what we do, we just peel that layer off. So what actually happens then, you've got that nice little thin layer there. Because that's so waterproof, it just naturally keeps all the juices of the fish in there. Oh, nice. It pushes the, the flavours of the native herbs through there, and of course the flavours coming out of the paper bark also go through it. Well, Rich, now that we've collected everything, what we're gonna do now is gonna have to cook it up. Yeah. yeah. We just put a little bit of rosemary on this side, get the fish, Put it in, so just below the head over there. Yeah. And we're going to need another bit of rosemary. Yeah, sure. So you just get a little bit of rosemary, put it on this side, and all we're doing now is just fold it over. And all you do is just put a stick through this side here. You don't have to make it too fancy. You should just put it in like that. Yeah. You don't have to cook it very long, in a sense of uh, cooking it, making sure that you're getting all the right flavours coming out. All we do is open it up. We can actually see it's nice and soft here now. So that now is now ready to eat. So what we basically do, we just pull it off the, pull it off the barbie, just get a stick, our little fork, so we can get it off. Get our plate, okay, that we've got here, because that's gonna be a little bit warm if we pull it off. So we just pull it onto our plate, enjoy. Thanks. Just peel it off. With my forks, yeah. That is delicious, actually. It is, it's a very simple way of cooking. Would you pass traditional ways of cooking down to your grandkids then and stuff for them to tell their grandkids? The last time I did this, I had my grandson. As the sun sets on my life and my grandson's life just starts to dawn, I am the conduit between my granddad to my grandson. And that's how we've been doing it. And that's how we'll continue to do it because our culture is that strong and it's embedded in us that we have to do it. <laughs>